And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Paul Kell, who during his near-death experience was assisted by his dog, and today we're going to learn about it. Paul, thank you for joining me, and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Well, if you don't mind, maybe we can just start on the day that it happened and go from there. Uh, this time three years ago, I was on a small island off the west coast of Thailand. I'm, I'm retired, so I spent part of the year in Thailand. And I was on the island of Ko Chang at a small cafe right on the beach. And I had ordered a smoked barracuda encrusted in macadamia nuts. And it tasted as good as it sounds. I, I was uh, so hungry, I vacuumed the food right up. And I was all alone. There was nobody else there. Um, as I ate, sitting down, I noticed that um, I had a catch in my throat, but I, uh, I ignored it. And I put some more food into my mouth. And then I realized that my mouth was packed, my throat was packed like wet cement, that, uh, that I was stuck. And the first um, experience, the, the, the first um, feeling I got was of uh, one of immediate surprise and panic. And I began to uh, try to save myself. I pushed on my stomach to create a Heimlich maneuver. I took both hands and I striped my throat upwards. Anything I could do. I may have tried to hit the back of my, my upper, upper back. But whatever it is that I did, nothing helped me. And by then I was standing up. There was nobody else around. And after uh, a minute, now we're approaching two minutes of no respiration, I went from extreme surprise and panic to one of acceptance that, that there was nobody here to help me and that, that I was going to die. And I was standing up on this tile floor, waiting to lose consciousness, holding my throat, and I'm gagging involuntarily the whole time. I'm going, oh, 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 oh. And there was no air going into my lungs. And uh, I just, there's nothing that I could do. And, and my extreme fear changed to acceptance where I didn't have fear anymore because I knew it was going to happen and I knew I couldn't change it. And in that moment, I decided that I would ask my deceased dog, she died a year before, if she could please witness my death. And um, when you're in a state of panic like that, your mind might see uh, stars, you know, if, even though your eyes are fully open in front of you. But suddenly, after a delay, I saw my dog walking towards me at eye level. And that in itself, I was very surprised, you know, that, that I wasn't looking down on the ground. And there she was. She was about 10 feet away. And instead of all the gray hair on her face and mouth, she now looked like a young dog. She was two or three years old, just beautiful. And my dog was as happy to see me as I was to see her. Uh, and, you know, we were just uh, thrilled that we could see each other. <clears throat> and after that, um, that initial um, moment of meeting, was over, my dog insisted, using telepathy, that I continue to try to save myself. And I told my dog, using telepathy, I said, I've tried everything. There's nothing more I can do. I'm going to die. And my dog continued to smile at me, and she stared at me with very, very um, uh, loving and and caring eyes, and she insisted that I continue to try and save myself. So finally, I, I lamented, I, I accepted uh, that I would try to save myself. And the moment that I told her that, that was the end of our 
connection. It was gone. What happened next was there was a pitcher of water on the table. And I picked it up. I spread my feet. I arched my back and I poured the entire contents down into my choking throat while I'm making involuntary muscle contractions. I'm going, oh, 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 oh. And I poured all the water in my mouth until it finally flowed out of my mouth. And suddenly I telescope vomited. And I, and I vomited about 10 or 15 feet. When that happened, I immediately knew that I would be okay and I could breathe. And, and after that, I breathed so deeply and so well that um, I was okay, but I had uh, throat pain from, from the spasms of what was going on in my throat for about two weeks. There was no blood, there was just pain. And that pain eventually went away. Paul, thank you for sharing that story. It is amazing. When you first started choking, do you think it was because you were eating too quickly and you just had too much food in your throat? Yes, exactly. I, I, I was in such a, I was so hungry, so voracious. I, I left my common sense uh, outside. I should have cleared my throat then, and I didn't. I took another bite. And that's when the whole thing just turned into wet cement. There, there's something in there that just won't come out. Had you been like snorkeling or something all day and you were starving? Um, no. Um, you know, is it, when you're retired and, and you don't move around very much, I, I only eat about two meals a day. Your appetite, my, my stomach uh, shrinks and uh, I don't eat like a person that goes to work every day. Why do you think you thought about your dog at that moment? Because she was the last person I knew that died. I, um, I could have contacted my parents, my mom and my dad. I'm sure they would have helped me, but they had died many years ago. And my dog had just passed about a year before. And I really thought about her very often. Mm. So you were maybe reaching out to her to help you. Is that what you're saying? I did. Yes, I, 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 I said, look, I'm Indy, I'm dying, and I'd like you to, to witness my death, please. And that, that's, that was the thought, and I waited, and there was a long pause. She didn't uh, materialize immediately. It took a long pause, and then all of a sudden, there she was, looking uh, right at me as she was walking up to me. It's hard to imagine. What's interesting is that Sometimes during near-death experiences or contact dreams, people will see their relatives on the other side young again, and you actually saw your dog young again. Yes, I was surprised that her coat looked like a young dog. All, all the gray was gone, and I don't know why. She, you know, uh, because she's a spirit, you know, she uh, had to create an image for me or else I wouldn't have been able to see her. So she created an image, and I guess that's a, one of vitality and good health. I'm guessing. Makes sense. You guys were speaking telepathically, but did you hear her voice, or did you just hear her thoughts in your voice? I didn't hear my voice speak because it was, I was using telepathy. Uh, my, my throat was making uh, choking sounds. Oh, oh, oh. So I, there's no way to, 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 to vocalize. However, uh, my thought to her uh, was received, and I clearly could hear her uh, words. They, they're, they're not a sound. They're translated into understanding. So your ears are bypassed. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be your uh, second cranial nerve. So it was like you just kind of downloaded the information? Um, Somehow the human body has a way of, of opening up a channel that for most of us, it's vestigial. It might have worked well a million years ago, but today we're left with almost nothing. Since your experience, have you noticed any new cognitive abilities that you didn't have prior? No, I, I only had throat pain for two weeks and uh, I often thought about my dog and 
but that never caused her to, to rematerialize. How have you changed since your experience? You know, I, I had pretty much had an open mind to NDEs, you know, years ago, the same as poltergeists and ghosts. This is fringe phenomena that the average person has probably seen once in their life or twice if they're lucky. Uh, however, um, as Robert Monroe says, we are more than our physical bodies. That, that uh, Siddhartha Gautama, who's the Buddha, said that when our physical body ceases, our conscious awareness continues. And that's um, something that uh, you might find on YouTube when you see a poltergeist video or a, or a ghost video that's on a government security cam or a bank cam where they can't manipulate it, but there it is. There's a, there's a extra part of us that will go on to develop itself in the next life without a physical body is what I'm imagining. Prior to this event, have you had any other paranormal experiences? Yes. Uh, one time I was visiting at a friend's house and I was staying and I was in the bathroom and I saw a guy appear in the bathroom mirror behind me. I don't know who he was, but he was in his 20s. And, I, you know, I asked my, um, my friends about it and they said, well, there, there is a ghost here of somebody that they, I don't really remember much more about it than that. And then another time I was at a uh, resort up in Big Bear, California, and uh, I saw a bottle slide off the shelf, uh, bounce down onto the lower shelf and pop up into the air about two feet. And the bar lady caught the bottle midair. You know, and I, I don't know, I, the only thing I could ask her was, you know, do you have poltergeists here? And she said, well, this Inn's about 100 years old, and we've had poltergeists for, for most of those years. That's the only uh, information I could get. The, me and the, the, the bartender lady, I mean, she was as much shocked as me because she was standing right in front of the shelf, and she just reached her arm up, and she was able to grab the bottle midair. Mm. It's almost impossible to, that something like that could happen. Uh then how there, uh, I think that's about it. You know, I don't remember anything else. Do you feel that your spiritual beliefs have changed since this experience? No, it's only uh, confirmed to what I, what I previously accepted. Nothing, nothing uh, new in my uh, perception, except my appreciation for my, my dog that survived physical death. And I, someday we're going to be together. Same like my parents, my uh, relatives. You know, we're, we're still connected. Conscious awareness cannot be destroyed. It's composed of subatomic, subatomic waves that are indestructible. That's, that's, that's what creates everything on this planet from physical objects to air. And these subatomic waves are what holds uh, the next life. All, all information about this planet has been recorded on the other side. That's from every ant and fly that's ever been born to the day they died. This earth is like a gigantic crystal that can store memory. And as like most of us know that a crystal can store memory in a, in a radio. Well, the earth is one gigantic crystal and it has that same capacity. You mentioned Bob Monroe. Did right. you only read his book or did you take any of his courses? Unfortunately, I became interested and in, I found out about Robert Monroe right after he died. Somewhere in the early 90s, uh, I purchased his programs. Uh, they're, they, at that time, they were all cassettes. Mm -hmm. And I, I still have them. And they're um, music that's imprinted with uh, sound waves that are indetectable. And there are a frequency of sound waves that Robert Monroe, uh, who was an electrical engineer, decided 
could create the greatest um, medium to encourage people to have an out-of-body experience. Um, I, I earnestly attempted to have that out-of-body experience because I had the tapes and I had the headphones on and I was ready. Unfortunately, I, I never had an NDE uh, except that there was a time where I was almost, uh, during these tapes, Robert Monroe will guide you through vi visual imagery and he puts you under and he wakes you up again at the end of the tape. And so during that tape is when you have your NDE. Um, what happened with me, I was laying on my back on a couch and I felt like I fell about a foot straight down. And, 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 and that woke me up and I, and I, I actually sat up. Because I felt instead of lifting up and out, that's why people have an out-of-body experience. What I felt, I, I literally fell right through my uh, couch. <coughs> Excuse me, and I heard a popping sound at the same time. And that's it. Well, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the <laughs> popping sound because some of the guests will say when they have an OBE that they'll hear a pop. I, 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 so I someone told me that that. It's a synchronous or a lack of synchrony with the out-of-body state and the physical state. There's a, a, a noise you might hear. And I did hear that. Um, it was uh, pretty, pretty distinct. I knew I, if, if, you ever, if you're ever on a, someone holds you up on a blanket and you're laying on your back with 10 people surrounding you, and they suddenly drop you about a foot or two, straight down, that's the way it feels. Do you think that kind of startled you and then you, you know, went back to your body? Yes. I, I you know, if I wasn't startled, I might have had an NDE, but, but it, I could feel myself fall and I heard the pop and, I, you know, it's hard to ignore something like that. <laughs> Did you notice any other changes after listening to those tapes? No, um, not really. I. I had also become involved in therapeutic touch, which is a nursing modality, which is used to treat the terminally ill. And therapeutic touch is, um, most of it is non-touch manipulation of the ether surrounding a pe person's body. And I had been, um, I had taken the beginners and the intermediate course from the actual founder. Her name is Dolores Krieger, Dr. Uh, RN PhD. She integrated therapeutic touch into Western nursing in 1972 in the Buffalo uh, University of New York. And since that time, it's now uh, practiced in most hospitals across the United States. And it appears to have the greatest effect on uh, calming people that are fearful about their last moments on earth. It, it just makes them relax. And uh, I, so I was aware of these different modalities. Would you say it's similar to Reiki? Well, Reiki is a copy of, of therapeutic touch. You know, um, therapeutic touch is based upon the, um, the lives of um, some Europeans. One fellow that was good at curing horses of illness uh, was involved in the creation of therapeutic touch at the beginning of the century, 20th century. And what Reiki is, Reiki is treatment for lay people to treat other lay people. Therapeutic touch is for nurses to treat patients. That's the biggest difference between it. Do you think that the therapeutic touch is any more effective? I wouldn't say that. I, I'm, I'm not trained in Reiki, so I, I, I really can't tell you. Uh, I'm imagining that many of the techniques are very similar. Uh, even Daniel Palmer was, before he became a chiropractor, discovered the foundation of chiropractic. He uh, was a lay healer that put his hands on people, and he also treated without hands direct contact. That was something that was still, you know, very old and, and known before uh, therapeutic touch and Reiki. Do you think there was a purpose or a reason for your experience beyond choking? My dog saved my life. If I had not asked my dog while I was standing there waiting to lose consciousness, then I would have died three years ago. I, but I, I asked my dog for help, and I, 
I, I, I didn't expect to survive what I was calling her on. I expected that I would be dying and my dog would be able to watch me. But it was my dog's insistence that I not give up that I'm alive to this day. My dog literally saved my life. Mm. Because I wouldn't have poured that water down my throat unless, uh, only because my dog demanded that I had to do something. That's why I would do something that is something actually against uh, logic. Because when you're choking, you're not supposed to put anything into your mouth. And here I was, flooding my mouth with water. So uh, I, 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 I tried to save my life, and I had a, a, a thin hope that perhaps what I would be doing might save my life. And I, I went for it, and I poured the water down my throat. That's kind of like, what other choice did you have anyways? I don't know. Um, but I recently heard about a, a guy here in California. This is on a... a comedian show and the 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 um interviewer was actually laughing at the guy because he was choking and the guy said what he did was he he took uh, the corner of a table and shoved it into his stomach and then he vomited and uh the the interviewer laughed like you know like it wasn't very um, important you know I encourage anyone out there that's listening to please, if they're choking, to try to shove the edge of a table right into their stomach, right right where their epigastric is, right below the ribs. Shove it in all the way. That's uh, Other than that, uh, try to pour the water down your throat. I think what's fascinating is a lot of times near-death experience guests, they will surrender and then something happens. You use the word acceptance, but the surrendering or acceptance brings on this kind of calm. I surrendered my life because I knew that I couldn't get out of where I was at. My fear at, by the third minute was all gone because I knew it would be happening and and I knew that that was the way it was going to be. It, so um, in a span of three minutes, I went from surprise and shock to fear and to finally acceptance and uh, i was just waiting to lose consciousness do you fear death at all no um it's part of life there's nothing we can do about it uh, except to try to live the best lives we can try to take care of ourselves try to form relationships with people that that can survive you know the the, the emotional uh, roller coasters that, that we all seem to live on. Mm. And to, uh, to appreciate the good memories of your family and your friends. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Uh, they can reach me on Facebook. Um, Paul Kell, K-E-L-L, Idlewild, California. And uh, whatever they want to ask, I would be happy to, to answer. I, I think for people that really don't know about death or if there is another life, because, you know, we can all see we're physical, you know, we're, you know, we're made of something. So it's very hard for people to transcend into something that's a state of that's unseen. But when you hear testimonials of people that have survived it, uh, at least it may bring comfort to people because it takes away a lot of the unknown. Paul, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Live the best life you can. Paul, thank you for that message, and thank you for being my guest. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara Podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.